This is an overview of the Alcatel-Lucent 8028 telephone. It also has a digital version called the 8029, which is identical in features and functions. Today we're going to go over the hardware, and then we will get into the features and usability of the station. So as we look at the phone, we're just going to work our way from left to right. Um, here on the far left side, we have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. This is for any external headset that you might want to use on the phone, um, and it's an industry standard. We also have the handset. The handset can go off hook. You'll notice that it will give you a prompt on uh, the phone itself, but that there is no hook flash on this phone. It actually uses an electronic hook flash embedded underneath the plastics. So when you hang up, the phone is hung up. That electronic hook flash allows you to use particular headsets, third-party headsets, that can uh, take the phone on and off hook through a button on the headset without using a mechanical lifter. Now as we work our way across, we have our dial pad. This is our traditional dial pad with your pound and star features. We also have two buttons underneath. The first one is your off hook button, so it will actually take the phone set off hook. The second is your hang up or on hook button, and it will go ahead and hang the phone up. We continue to work across. Down here is the mute key, so if you are speaking on the handset, it will mute the handset. If you are speaking on the speakerphone, it will also mute the speakerphone so that nobody on the other side can hear you. If you press and hold that key when the phone is in the idle state, it activates what's called the interphone or voice announce feature. If your phone in the idle state has a blue light above the mute key, that means when another party calls you that you will hear a burst tone followed by their voice. They can automatically speak to you and you can speak back to them. If you don't like the burst tone, of course you can turn that off um, and it won't do the actual voice, it will just do a ringing until you pick up the phone. That feature may or may not be enabled in your system. You'll have to check with your installing distributor to turn that feature on or off. The next two keys are your volume control, and they also impact the contrast of the LCD display. So you can turn the volume up and down, as well as brighten or dim the LCD. Next, we have our speakerphone. So if you press that, you're going to be in the speakerphone mode, and that's uh, the full audio. The phone itself supports a wideband audio format. So it's a very rich speakerphone sound. This phone works well as a speakerphone in a small office. It would not necessarily be ideal for a larger conference room, in which case if you were in a larger conference room you might want to get a proprietary conference phone or there is an audio booster that can plug into the 3.5 millimeter headset jack uh, to give you a little additional audio from the phone. The next buttons are the hold key and that allows you to take a current call and place it on hold while you go get additional information or make another call. The second key is the transfer key. This allows you to take a call that you are on and transfer it to another extension, another group, or to a phone off-premise depending on how your phone system is programmed. The next key is the redial key. The redial key has two features. A short press will redial the last number called. A long press will pull up the redial list and it will give me a list of the last eight calls that I've made on this phone. I can use the navigation array to move up and down and when I have found the phone number that I want to call or redial, I simply press OK, puts the phone into the speaker mode and it makes the outbound call. The next key is the info key. The info key is for when I'm not sure what a particular key does. So for example, if I don't know what line one does, I simply press the info key, followed by the line one key, and it will give me a text Im indicator of what that key is. Now, this is an RGM or a resource key. Sometimes that information is more technical in nature, other times it's a little bit uh, different or clearer language depending on the type of key. Now, of course, the C key right above is the clear key, and it actually takes you back one level, so you go back into the main uh, menu structure. This is the navigational array. This allows me to navigate within the screen. So as you'll notice, I have multiple tabs, which we will get to later, so I can move left and right through the tabs. And of course, I can scroll up and down for additional information, just like I can scroll in a, in a computer screen. So as you can see, that little dot right there will move down. Now I have up to 40 keys available on this system. 
so I can program a large number of speed dials and other one-touch features. However, this smart display actually gives me features as I need them, which we will see as we demonstrate various features in the system. The button on the bottom right is the mailbox access key. When I press that, it actually gives me all of my voicemails, text mails. So as you can see here, I have two outstanding text mails, I have no voicemails, and of course I have additional features in the messaging tab. The three keys on either side of the soft display are feature keys. So whatever line is next to that key, or whatever feature is next to that key, is what will be activated. So in this screen here, we have a blank key, we have a line one and a line two, we have a couple of speed dial and call coverage keys, and we have our station forwarding. And we will show you those features as we go through. The QWERTY keyboard is unique to the Alcatel phones, and it provides you two different features. The first is the ability to text message between desktop phones. You can also text message to optional smartphone applications and web browser applications. Speak to your local installing distributor about those opportunities. But as you can see, text messages show up right here in the messaging window, and we can text between appliances. Now, of course, the dial by name directory allows your desk phone to work much more like your cell phone in the fact that you typically will dial someone's name instead of their number. As you can see, as I start dialing or using the text, I can type and it begins pulling up numbers. Uh, here I've got nine different numbers that start with the letter J and I can just scroll through here until I find one that I want to call and I press OK, at which point it goes off hook and makes the call. So on the smart display, we have several keys that are pre-programmed, and it will vary depending on your installation and your needs. But as you can see here, I've got two speed dials for Jeff and David, and I have line one and line two. I can go ahead and scroll down, and now I have an intercom key, followed by a speed dial key for Tanya, and a divert key, which is actually an instant forward key, so it would forward all my calls to my voicemail. Now we have some blank keys, so let's go ahead and program one. It's simple. We simply press the button, at which point we are told what key we have, and we can now program the name and the number for this speed dial key. So in the name, I'm going to go ahead and type in the name. Just like a keyboard, I have to hold the shift key down to get a capital. And we'll click OK. Now it has accepted the name for the label, and now we get the number. And it starts with the 9, and I'm okay with that, so we'll just move over one. So that's the 9 for the outside line, followed by the rest of his number. We'll click OK. Now if it were a long distance number, I'd add a 1 to that. So as you can see, we now have the name and the number created for this key. And we could clear it from this point, but we're not going to. We're going to go ahead and clear out of this area, and we're back at the main tab. As you can see, when I scroll down, I now have a number for Jeff Rolf, and when I press the key, it goes ahead and dials. To erase a key, I simply go into the menu tab, followed by settings. I can scroll down and go to keys, at which point you'll see here I have this speed dial tab. This is the same as my main tab. There's the Jeff Rolf key. I press it, I scroll down, I select clear, I click OK, and it is accepted. Now when I go back to the main tab, you can see here that I will have an empty key where I had that Jeff key programmed earlier. If I want particular feature keys, I usually would want to work with my installing distributor to make sure that those are programmed. However, as you'll go through the rest of this demonstration, you will see that most features that you need are actually presented when you need them because of the smart display. Let's go ahead and scroll back up. So to make a call, it's pretty simple. I can either make internal calls, which are typically going to be three or four digit intercom dials, or I can make external calls, which typically mean I have to dial nine to tell the system that I am dialing outside. So in this case, if I want to make an internal call, I simply dial the extension and away I go. Now, of course, the other way I can dial that extension is to dial by name. As you can see here, we have test thrasher, which is the exact same number that we had before. We have two different numbers, but we want to dial her intercom number. 
So I can either use the hot keypad to dial it directly, or I can type the name and dial from the screen that is populated. Now, of course, if I want to dial an outside line, I simply dial 9 followed by the 10-digit number. The other option is I can select a line key followed by 9 and the 10-digit number. All of those ways are viable ways to outdial. Whichever one you are the most convenient uh, with is the one you'll probably use. In fact, most folks will take their handset off hook. They'll dial 9 for an outside line followed by their 10-digit number. Now we're going to show you how to answer a call. So while I'm on an active call, I can go ahead and transfer, conference, make other calls, place calls on hold. So I'm going to go ahead and place this cell phone on hold, at which point you can see the calls on hold. I can select another line, however I want to deal with this. So let's say I want to talk to Tess. I select the line. And I could start typing her name, but since I know her extension, and as you can see, I now have two calls. I have the test call, and then I have the other call, which is the cell call, on hold. I can toggle back and forth between those. As you can see, the icons change. So maybe I'm going to get some information and then go back and talk to Tess. The other party, when they're on hold, actually hears music on hold. When I hang up with Tess, the call that's on hold automatically rings back to my station. That ensures that I never hang up on a call that is on hold and lose it. It'll always ring back to my phone if my phone goes into the idle state. One of the great features of this system is the callback feature. Perhaps I'm calling another employee, in this case Tess, and you'll notice I get a please wait, and I don't get any ringing. I now have a feature identified on the key called callback. When I press that key, it gives me a notification that booking is accepted. What it has just booked is a callback. When I go into my info tab, you can actually see I have a callback active. What is a callback? It's the ability for when Tess and my phone are both in the idle state, for the phone system to go ahead and connect the two phones together. And it just is a quick way to remind me to, hey, I need to talk to Tess and I don't have to wait until she's off the phone. The phone system will let me know. So I'm going to go ahead and hang up on Tess's phone. And you'll notice I have ringing on my phone. When I pick up the phone, it now rings Tess's phone, at which point we're in conversation. And I don't have to wait and look for a light or walk over and find out when Tess is off the phone. The phone system does it for me with the callback feature. The next feature we'll explore is the forward feature. So if I've walked away from my desk and I'd like to forward all of my calls, it's very simple. I go into the forward feature set. As you can see here, when I press the forward, there's no forward active. I can immediately forward. I can immediately forward to voicemail, which is what most users do. I can put my phone into Do Not Disturb, which may or may not forward to my voicemail box. It depends on how the system is forwarded. And I can also cancel forwarding from this menu. Um, I can forward when I, only when I'm busy. I can reply with a text message to other internal phones. Um, I can actually set up Follow Me as a way to ring another phone, so forward it to another phone in the building. I can also forward to a page where it will page information that I have a call over a page system. And an external location would be something like my cell phone. We're going to go ahead and immediately forward to voicemail, which is most of the time what people will use. And once I forwarded it, I get a forward accepted. The icon now moves to show that I have forwarding enabled. And then I will get text that scrolls across the top of the screen that will tell me that it's forwarded to voicemail. So at this point, when a phone calls my extension, it will go straight into my voicemail box with no ringing. If I want to cancel that forwarding, I simply press the forward feature, scroll down to the cancel button, cancel forward is accepted, and the icon will stop moving. Let's take a look at how we manage messages on this system. The message key does more than just retrieve my voicemails. It also shows me text messages as well as missed calls that had not left a voicemail. 
I can go into the voice menu or I can go and read texts. So in this case, I'll look at my voicemails and it's going to ask me for my password. You can see here I have new messages and old messages. I can also send messages from here either to an individual or I can send it to a distribution list if I have that feature available. So I'm going to check my messages and as you can see I have a list. Now this list only has one but if I had multiple voicemails I would have a list that I could scroll through. So I don't have to listen to them in order. I can pick and choose how I want to listen to my voicemails. If I want to find out more let's click OK. You can see there I have one message from there. I can play it. I can erase it. Here I can make a copy. I can go ahead and call him back. So I have all of those features available right from my voicemail screen. The copy feature allows me to take this voicemail and send it to another user. The call feature allows me to ring back whoever has called me. So it will either call the external number or the internal number. Let's take a look at the menu tab. The menu tab allows me to modify my phone. I can set, change settings on the phone, I can redial, I can lock my phone, and I can also book an appointment reminder, in which case the phone will actually go off hook at an appointed time by pressing that key. We'll go ahead and go into the settings. Here is where I can change my mailbox, um, where I can activate my voice assistant if I have that feature available. We're going to go into the set and you can see here I have the ability to modify my headset, to tell the system what type of device I have plugged into the 3.5 millimeter headset jack. I can adjust the contrast. There's my screen. So there's my default contrast all in this screen. So in an office environment, it might be important to change the ringtone on your phone to make sure you know which phone is ringing. We simply go to the menu tab, followed by the settings, followed by set. We then have the ringing feature, and we can either have it where we change the level to ring louder or softer. We can make it a progressive ringtone where it starts quiet and gets louder. We can prepend the ringing with just a beep followed by the ringing note. We can put our phone on silent, in which case it won't ring. We'll still have information on the screen, but it won't ring. And of course, the Tune Plus allows us to pick from a large library of built-in ringing tones. Once we like the tone, we click OK, and now every call coming in will now ring with that particular ringtone on my phone. Of course, we just press the C key to go back, and we're back at the main menu.